In the online game Legendary Age LA, Akko proposes to her guildmate Rujin, who declines vowing never to love again as she persists. During a dungeon battle, Rujin and Schwein fight as Akko heals the team, and their master Apricot uses his magic staff to eliminate the enemies. Rujin is defeated because Apricot is too slow, so Akko revives him and expresses her love before they quit the game. The next day at school, Hideki announces finding a new wife to his friends who criticize him for frequently changing girlfriends. He then recommends anime and is called an otaku, which Akane deems disgusting. Their advisor, Yui, calls them to a school assembly, and on the way, Su mentions a schoolmate confessed to Akane and got rejected. Hideki claims Akane isn't his type, earning a threat from her as he bumps into Akko, who shyly hurries away. During the assembly, she avoids eye contact with him, and at home, he immediately logs into LA fighting dungeons. Rujin notices the others distracted by Akko's happiness over a protection ring he gave her. Afterward, he blames his tiredness on Akko's mistakes, sparking an argument with Schwein about skills. But when Apricot brags about his buffs, they criticize him for being a pay-to-win player. Reflecting on his bad luck with girls in real life, Rujin feels grateful to have Akko as his in-game wife. Schwein notes how Akko always sticks to Rujin, saying they look like a real couple before boasting about someone confessing to him in real life. This triggers Akko's hatred towards normies, and when Rujin calms her, she directs her anger at him for rejecting her marriage proposal ten times. So he admits not being into in-game marriages because they're fake, but Akko reveals he petitioned for marriage in LA, embarrassing him. In the past, Rujin proposed to Nekohimi who declined because she was a man in real life, making him distrust girls in online games which Apricot and Schwein laugh about. He recalls how Nekohimi was his ideal girl, but the shock led him to play solo for a year. Akko apologizes and expresses her love, but Hideki remains cautious and wary of repeating past mistakes. Still, she clarifies she's a real girl along with Apricot, who suggests they all meet in person. The next day, Akko shyly discloses she's Akko from LA, and upon confirming Hideki is Rujin, she excitedly clings to him. Akane and student council president Q then arrive, revealing their Schwein and Apricot, which shocks everyone. At a cafe, Akko remains sweet to Hideki, and Q starts introductions, suggesting they make their friendships worthwhile. Akane awkwardly goes next, but she's embarrassed to learn that Schwein means pig in German. Hideki introduces himself normally, and Akko apologizes for being a burden in LA before introducing herself, realizing she and Hideki are classmates. They're stunned that she has no school friends, so the others assure the four of them are. Later, Hideki recalls a schoolmate confessing to Akane and comments on her popularity, triggering jealousy in Akko and Q. Akane refuses romance to focus on gaming, but Hideki says it would suit her identity. So Akko suggests she marry in-game to keep gaming time, and Hideki blushes, feeling lucky to have a cute in-game wife. When Q's father is revealed to be on the board of directors, Hideki is shocked by her wealthy background. While Akane understands her lavish spending in LAQ, clarifies her spending money is hard-earned, but Akko's resentment grows until Hideki calms her down. Due to her controlling parents, Q only has online friends, prompting Akko to encourage her. After eating, Akane and Hideki argue over LA equipment efficiency, with Q mediating but getting criticized for her wealth. Akko prioritizes appearance and faces backlash for her bad healing, leaving her defeated. Parting ways, Hideki apologizes for assuming everyone was male and confesses he had fun, realizing his online friends are also great in person. Q also thought Hideki would stare at girls, and Akane warns him not to get cheeky at school, sparking Akko's jealousy. As Hideki and Akko walk home, Akko is annoyed he doubts her identity and asks why he agreed to marry her. Gender doesn't matter to him because she's a girl in the game, making her appreciate his kindness and express her love. Still, Hideki reminds himself that games are different from reality if they part ways. That night, the guild fights dungeons as usual, but Rujin sees them as their true identity. Apricot and Akko log off early, with Akko planning to bathe and Rujin imagining her appearance until Schwein notices. Rujin then teases Schwein about his pig name, irritating him into warning him not to act differently towards them at school to avoid rumors. The next day at school, Akane accidentally greets Hideki and then calls him disgusting, prompting his friends to wonder if he confessed, which he denies. Suddenly, Akko approaches calling him Rujin, embarrassing him into telling her to stop. Her mentioning of them being together last night raises speculations until she reveals they're married, shocking everyone while Akane suggests talking elsewhere. However, Akko calls her Schwein, mortifying her into dragging them outside to remind her not to use in-game names in person. Misunderstanding their friendship, Akko cries, recalling past betrayals, so they clarify their requests and reassure their friendship, relieving her. Returning to class, Akko invites Hideki to lunch because they're married, 
making him and Akane realize she can't distinguish games from reality. They meet Q in the student council room, where Q reminds Akko their marriage is only in LA still. Akko asserts her pure love for Hideki, recalling how previous gaming friends abandoned her while Hideki stayed regardless. Akane calls Hideki a hookup troll, sparking an argument while Q explains the term refers to someone who takes advantage of girls online to Akko. Fed up, Hideki plans to make Akko understand the difference between games and reality, scaring her. Later, Cube introduces them to a gaming club where they can play LA after school, which Hideki and Akane refuse, but Akko loves the idea. Hugh convinces Akane by warning her that her level will fall behind, and Hideki's comment about the well built PCs eventually persuades her to join. Turns out, Hugh made the club to help Akko distinguish between games and reality, but Hideki determined to achieve this, while Akko remains deeply in love with him. That night, Hideki logs into LA and finds the others offline before unexpectedly encountering Nekohimi. Rujin finds Nekohimi cute despite knowing she's a man and explains that their incident made him separate games from reality. At school, Akko pays morning respects to Hideki, who clarifies their marriage is only in LA, however, she misunderstands and acts sweetly, catching attention. When Yui arrives, she privately asks Hideki if they're dating, to which he denies. Still, Yui encourages him to be kind to her as she has few friends and often skips school. After school, the four play LA in the gaming room, and Hideki is stunned to find Akko has equipped the wrong gear from prioritizing looks. Akane is also disappointed by her useless staff making Q laugh. In a dungeon, Akko complains about her ugly gear, and because they agreed not to use premium equipment, Apricot uses a staff with premium buffs which is ineffective, defeating her. As Rujin and Schwein fight the mobs, Hideki helps Akko with her controls, leaving them exhausted afterward. Still, they played better since Hideki multitasked his and Akko's controls. Outside, Akko notices she's been attending school daily, and Hideki admits to getting used to being called Rujin as they stop at a convenience store. Drinking juice, Akko likens their bonding to L.A. and wonders if they look married, making him almost blurt looking like her boyfriend and blush. Akko then reveals her parents are often away and she always games, hinting at her loneliness. Back at the club, the gamers take a break after dungeon fights and find Akko's healing skills have improved. Later, Akane feels the club is pointless, since Akko still hasn't separated games from reality. Additionally, their club risks disbandment due to lacking an advisor, so Q hopes Akko learns by then. Rujin seeks advice from Nekohimi about Akko, and when Nekohimi worries about the outcome, he asserts his relationship with Akko privately. However, she only assumes he's cheating and gets angry. After Rujin seeks advice again, Akko confronts him about Nekohimi, learning she's the one he proposed to, and becomes jealous. Still, Rujin refuses to let her interfere with Nekohimi, causing her to leave glumly. The next day, Yui approaches Hideki about Akko's absence, but the club finds Akko online in LA, where she reveals plans to meet someone in real life. They're confused since she has no other friends, but when she mentions the player is a man, Rujin forbids it. Akko insists she can because their marriage is only in L.A., worrying Akane while Rujin eventually allows it, seeing Akko has learned the difference between games and reality. Outside, Hideki vents his frustration when Q and Akane arrive, hoping he'll intervene with Akko's meetup. He refuses, but Akane knows he likes Akko and encourages him to protect her, prompting him to confess his love and rush to her at the station, asserting her marriage in L.A. unexpectedly. Yui arrives to meet Akko and is revealed as Nekohimi, shocking Hideki, who realizes he confessed to his teacher. Suddenly, Akko attempts to attack Yui with a staff but gets knocked out. With this, Yui becomes the club's advisor on the condition all members attend school regularly. Meanwhile, Akko, still calling Hideki Rujin, invites him to meet her parents, which he refuses. Her persistence annoys him, leading him to shout that games and reality are separate. After being heartbroken by Nekohimi, Rujin considered joining a guild, but learning its members prioritize gaming over work and school, he decided not to. Akko desires a similar lifestyle, earning criticism from Hideki for neglecting her studies. She then realizes she forgot her wallet and plans to sell items for money like in LA, which Hideki shares with the club. Though the others share similar experiences, Yui reminds the club's purpose and suggests disbanding, but Q's teasing makes her continue. Q then announces a new outlet update with mystery boxes and buys some for Akko and Hideki. Walking home, Akko is disappointed after not receiving any rare items. She relates it to her bad luck in life and wants to quit L.A., prompting Hideki to cheer her up by buying ice cream and sharing it with her. The next morning, Hideki's friends tease him about being married to Akko and Akane arrives in a bad mood, prompting an apology from Nanako. His friends jokes about two-timing then anger Akko as she watches from afar. 
Later, she arrives at the club room, exhausted from her classmates' questions about her relationship with Hideki, due to her frequent visits to his classroom. So Akane offers socializing tips, but Akko dismisses them, preferring to stay a loner. Suddenly, Nanako visits after spotting Akane secretly entering the club room, embarrassing Akane who wanted to keep it secret. Q introduces their club, making Akane push Nanako out and dread her ruined school life. In LA, Akko and Rujin wait for Apricot, doubting Akane will show up after what happened. Growing bored, they enjoy going skydiving and exploring the sea in town, with Akko likening it to a honeymoon. Rujin clarifies it's just a date but blushes realizing what he said as they reminisce about their first meeting in LA when Akko, a troubled newbie, sought Rujin's help and then followed him throughout the game. Rujin criticizes her stalker-like behavior, and they spot him in and enter, finding a couple on a bed. Akko innocently wonders what they're doing and Rujin suggests they mind their business. However, she reminds him of their in-game marriage and imagines an intimate moment making Rujin feel uneasy. Annoyed, Rujin walks outside, and she apologizes only until they encounter Nekohimi, surrounded by men who think Rujin and Akko have wronged her. These men are Nekohimi's former guild members who recently reconnected with her, and as they swear to protect her, Rujin and Akko leave, not wanting to get involved. Later, they observe how Nekohimi is treated like a princess when a player infested with mobs approaches them. She thanks Rujin for his help, and he realizes she's a beginner and wonders if they've met before. Akko suspects cheating until the girl's set asks for game advice, prompting Rujin to explain the basics, as they use the same weapon type. Meanwhile, Akko's jealousy grows. The next day, Akane is excited to play since Nanako promised to keep the club secret, though Hideki warns her to remain cautious. The four log in to play together, but Sega arrives and clings to Rujin, confusing everyone and worrying Akko. Rujin clarifies that Set is a newbie he briefly guided and Schwein offers to help her, but Set prefers Rujin for his kindness. The next day, Akko suggests playing a different game, and the club agrees, choosing the FPS game Ultra Force. As the game starts intensely, Akko protects Rujin with a sniper and gets pumped feeling the game suits her. Then, they continue playing the game at home all night. The next morning, Hideki is exhausted from grinding Ultra Force when he spots Akko nearby, cautious of enemy soldiers around. Akko then imagines sniping normies, but Hideki stops her as Nanako approaches, asking whether the club played yesterday since she waited for him in LA, revealing she's set. Akane dreads her ruined school life, and Nanako learns Hideki and Akko are only a couple in the game. Hideki tries to explain, but Nanako clings to his arm, making Akko cry. Sharing the incident with Yui and Q, Q believes Nanako's actions shocked Akko, while Akane thinks she fears Nanako will steal Hideki. Nanako denies romantic intentions, and they decide to give Akko space to calm down. During club time, Hideki tries to reconcile with Akko in LA, explaining Nanako's lack of romantic interest. However, Akko is uninterested and plans to reincarnate her character, quit school, and focus solely on the game. Rujin attempts to dissuade her, but she turns off her chat, frustrating the club. Still, Ingui recalls Akko's past aggressive behavior and sees her current avoidance as an improvement, expressing confidence in Hideki's ability to fix things. Outside, Akane mentions Akko's former group abandoning her, but deems Hideki different, always assuring their future together. Akane feels the same as Akko towards him, so she hopes he can bring her back. The next morning, Hideki nervously visits Akko and meets her mother, who recognizes him as Akko's husband. He learns Akko has told her parents about him and claims he is visiting her and skipping school, intriguing her as she leaves for work, asking Hideki to take care of Akko and lending him the key to her room. Hideki knocks on Akko's door, surprising her since her mom permitted him to hang out. Entering her room, he's shocked to see her wearing only underwear and exits so she can dress up. However, she misunderstands his intentions and removes all her clothes instead. Later, now clothed, Akko reveals she usually locks herself in her room for whole weeks, joking that she pees in plastic bottles as Hideki drinks tea from one. Akko worries Hideki will force her back to school, but is surprised he just wants to hang out. He then teaches her Ellie's strategies for a successful reincarnation throughout the day until Apricot and Schwein log in. Hideki also logs in to explain their absence and share his plans to quit school, shocking everyone since he plans to quit because Akko will. Nekohimi supports Hideki's approach, but Akko objects, not wanting him to lose contact with their friends. So he asks if Akko is okay with the same, and the others give him time to fix things. Realizing Akko is overwhelmed, he assures her they can always play when she needs a break from real life. If she feels better, she can return to school where he'll be waiting. After Nekohimi rejects Rujin, his friend Yuian cries that his wife married someone else with another character, calling it cheating. 
Yujin then revealed Nekohime's reasons for rejecting Ruzhin, and they both vowed never to marry again. However, Yuyan is now in his third marriage. Akko assures Ruzhin she won't divorce him, expressing her love and making him blush and log out early. The next day at school, Yui accidentally calls Hideki Ruzhin in class, causing laughter. During the break, Akko feels overwhelmed by classmates until Hideki listens to her rants. In the club room, Akko criticizes Akane's magazine, but Akane explains it's a guide for high school girls to improve their lives, comparing it to essential game guides, which frustrates Hideki. He arrives to find everyone exhausted, but upon discovering what happened, she laughs and empathizes with Akko. For the club, Hideki suggests helping Set with a quest in LA, irritating Akko, who refuses to play with Set. After the quest, Set gains divine power and transforms into a summoner, immediately summoning a pet dog. Shuayan, annoyed, points out Set has been playing for a while and should be used to it. But Set admits she didn't read the guide Shuin gave her, and just asked Ruzhin for help, angering her further. Set then reminds everyone of the upcoming final exams, so Q suspends club operations until after the test so they can focus on studying, also hinting at plans for the club during summer vacation. Walking home, Hideki encourages Akko to keep attending school, but since she only comes for the club, she's too lazy too. Hideki insists both school and the club are important, but when Akko reveals she failed all her past exams, he wonders how to help her at home. Hideki encounters his sister Mizuki, who requests help in studying, and he realizes he can help Akko study. He quickly tells the guild in LA about it, so despite Akko's resistance, the members take turns teaching her each subject all night. The next morning, Akko nervously attends school for the final exams and is exhausted afterward. Nekohimi mentions she topped her scores and commends everyone for their tutoring efforts, and they encourage Akko to rest before playing again so she can continue attending school. When the others log out, Ruzhin seeks advice from Schwein and Apricot in confessing his love to Akko. Aware that summer vacation is coming, Apricot realizes he wants to make memories with Akko before they stop seeing each other frequently. However, they refuse to give advice knowing Akko probably won't reject him, also adding their inexperience in romance. The next day on the day before vacation, the gaming club has its last meeting, where Q announces they'll have a club camp this weekend. As it's outdoors, Yui will accompany them. Walking home, Hideki recalls when Akane and Q encouraged him to confess and wished him luck. So he suggests they stop by the park, but he finds himself struggling to create a nice mood. Still, he musters the courage to ask her out, and shockingly, she refuses. That night, Hideki cries about it with Akane and Q, who ask Akko what happened. Turns out, she rejected him since they're already married, and she refuses to become his girlfriend instead. On the day of the club camp, Hideki is sleepy from gaming all night and waking up early. Akane and a very sleepy Akko arrive, with Akko falling onto Hideki's chest until Q announces that internet use is prohibited, shocking Akko. Hideki recalls Q saying Akko games constantly because she's frustrated with reality, so she plans for the club to spend summer vacation with Akko, hoping she'll enjoy it like an ordinary girl along with Hideki confessing to her. With many potential spots for his confession at the beach, Hideki feels nervous about the task. Upon arriving at the cottage Q rented, Yui wonders about the cost, but learning the caretakers prepared their beds angers her, feeling it's not a true camp. Later, Hideki is stunned to find they're at a private beach when Akko approaches in a beautiful swimsuit, making him blush. Though confident at first, Akko becomes shy until Hideki compliments her. When Akane and Q arrive, Akane tells Akko to apply sunscreen, warning of painful sunburn, which scares her into asking for some. However, Akko feels ticklish as Akane applies sunscreen on her back. The girls then work together to apply sunscreen on Hideki, leaving him defeated as Yui arrives, allowing them to start enjoying the sea. Yui sunbathes until the others return, suggesting they play a game since it's still early. Though Hideki compares an online game to their current actions, they all want to rest separately, which angers Yui into urging them to enjoy their youth. So they play different games until sunset and afterward. Hideki bathes, remembering his plan to confess to Akko. Unexpectedly, she arrives to join him, leaving him embarrassed to be seen without clothes. Later, Q prepares a barbecue dinner, and Akko helps with the ingredients in cooking. After enjoying the meal, Akko and Hideki hang out while the others play with sparklers. Q lights up fireworks she prepared, and while watching, Akko tears up with joy and experiencing such happiness. Though she also feels a hint of sadness, she's thankful to be with Hideki, so he finally confesses to her. However, Akko still sees them as husband and wife, leaving him defeated as he shares the incident with Q and Akane. He's frustrated that nothing can get Akko to understand, making the girls realize their mission failed before going to bed. 
The next morning, she announces they'll be moving to a hotel that's currently collaborating with LA upon receiving their tokens. They use them to log into LA on the hotel's PCs, and the collab event instructs them to dine in the nearby restaurant that offers items in-game depending on which meal they buy. They are then directed to the gift shop where Akane buys multiple boxes of snacks to get her desired Ella items. Afterward, Q suggests resting in their rooms that contain PCs so they can play together. When Rujin and Akko meet, Akko shyly invites him to her room and inside she claims they're alone and requests to chat like a couple, intriguing him. While playing with Akko, Hideki gets disconnected and spills his drink so he cleans it shortly. Upon returning to LA, he realizes his account is hacked and rushes to Akko's room, finding her crying. Turns out, the hacker pretended to be Rujin and urged her to send pictures of herself. Hideki reassures her it's not her fault and blames his carelessness before they inform the others about it. Q realizes they weren't careful when they logged into public computers, and Yui advises contacting the hotel, while Q discovers the hacker initially failed to get Hideki's account due to a typo earlier. Hideki also learns the lobby PC's login page is fake and his character, Rujin, has been deleted. This makes Akko cry but Hideki reassures her and plans to retrieve his items with the girl's help. Hideki then seeks assistance from his acquaintance guild master using a sub-character named Parajki. The master unexpectedly agrees to help. Meanwhile, Nekohimi deploys her former guildmates to search for Rujin's stolen items. Parajki and Apricot find some of his inventory in the market as Parajki receives mail from Nekohimi's guild who located the ring Akko gave him. Seeing this, Akko believes in the power of their love, the next day, Hideki, Q, and Yui discuss the hacking incident at school, which Q claims is also her responsibility. Still, Hideki is upset that the hacker pretended to be him and mistreated Akko, worrying their relationship is fragile since it's just in the game. However, Q mentions how Akko immediately identified the imposter, indicating a deep connection between them and motivating Hideki to catch the culprit. Later, the guild learns that LA's admins won't help recover Rujin's stolen items because the hackers and seller, LL and Tan's IP addresses don't match, making them realize they must first identify the culprit before pointing accusations. Just then, the guild master, Black Magician, arrives, showing LL and Tan's scam blog where he jokes about hacking Rujin's account. LL and Tan also engages in prohibited RMT, real money trades, giving Rujin an idea to catch him. The club spends days on their computers hoping the plan works, and when Akko visits Hideki, he reminds her of their divorce since Rujin is deleted. Though Hideki clarifies they're just friends, Akko gives him a bento she made for him, knowing he's been working hard. This encourages Hideki to finalize his plan and express gratitude. Meanwhile, Black Magician delves deeper into the culprit's blog. Later, the club meets in the club room and proceeds with their plan in LA where Hideki finds the hacker disguised as Shoko instead of Elo and Tan. Q then coordinates their trading exchange to transfer both to a game master named Nayak who was informed about their RMT. So Perashki exposes Shoko's plans before revealing himself as Rujin, and since LA's admins detected illegal activities from Shoko's IP address, they'll take legal action. Perashki then reveals he made a fake site to capture the hacker's IP, declaring its payback for making his wife cry. Afterward, Q explains how they trapped the hacker and that Parashki's account was fortunately locked for only three days for attempting RMTs. Additionally, they restored Rujin's character, relieving Akko. However, Hideki mentions there's one more thing to address. Akane, Akko, and Nanako visit Q's house for a sleepover and are amazed by its size. Akane reminds Akko about her unfinished summer homework, so Akko suggests inviting Hideki, but he can't stay over since he's a boy. Akane then says it's a chance for Akko to socialize without him annoying Akko, who dislikes Nanako. Inside, Q's maids express surprise that she has friends embarrassing her as they're revealed later to be fake maids for the sleepover. The girls observe Q's large room which has a separate area for her computer setup, and Nanako proposes starting their homework. However, Akko gets tired quickly and goes to the bathroom with Nanako to ensure she doesn't run away. Afterward, Akko explores Q's home out of curiosity and Nanako reluctantly follows while Q and Akane notice their prolonged absence. Still, Akane assures her that despite their differences, Akko and Nanako get along well. Akko and Nanako explore Kyu's large library and find a suspiciously placed book, which Akko aligns revealing a secret room with a treasure chest. Inside, they find a book, but are caught by a maid, who explains it's hidden because Q is embarrassed about it. The maid threatens them into joining the Kyu admirer society, scaring them into running away. Hearing their screams, Q and Akane assume the girls are up to something and Akane remarks that Hideki would know how to handle it, making Q notice her respect for him despite her usual treatment. 
Embarrassed, Akane clarifies she never intended ill treatment as Akko and Nanako to call for help. After escaping the maid, Akko finds herself clinging to Nanako and admits she can't accept her, that Nanako wishes to be friends. They then shout for Q outside as they're unable to find her room, and they continue studying in the backyard, sharing the story of Yui being Mekohimi who tricked Rujin with Nanako. Akko muses about being Rujin's first love if he met her first, mixing games with reality again. The girls then plan to make good memories until Akko reveals she hasn't started her homework during Akane. At dinner, Q's family chef serves luxury meals and Akko teases Akane for mistaking finger cleansing bowls for drinks. Later, the girls bathe together and Akane warns Akko not to wash others' hair like she did at camp. Nanaka wishes she could have joined, prompting them to clarify she's not an official club member. The girls scrub each other's bodies, their conversation eventually leading to Hideki's preferences and looks. Akane guesses he likes slender girls, shocking Akko who video calls Hideki to make him choose between their bodies like a game quest, causing the girls to urge her to stop to avoid being seen unclothed. Eventually, the phone is passed and Nanaka who turns off the phone, canceling the call. Later, they're amazed by Q's large bed, and Q claims they're the first people she ever invited, feeling grateful. Akane enjoys bonding with the girls without Hideki, though Akko always prefers him. This prompts Nanako to ask about Akko's feelings, noting they are only married in-game, but Akko insists they're a couple. Akko imagines a real-life couple not marrying in-game, and the girls agree it would be cheating to marry someone else in-game, proving her point. Flabbergasted, the girls desperately call for Hideki's help. Rujin recalls joining a party with only one healer and losing because she couldn't keep up. He regretted not addressing the issue earlier and hoped she wouldn't quit the game. So when they met again at another party, he mentioned it, and she was thankful. Akko misunderstands the story, so he clarifies that people sometimes struggle to ask for help and need assistance, hoping she'll stop claiming they're married at school, but she only laughs it off. After summer vacation, Hideki sweats in the heat at school, and Akane drags him aside to vent about socializing with classmates as Nanako passes, stating they can act normally without being discreet. They notice Akko's absence afterward when Akko calls Hideki. Confused about no one being online in LA during assembly, Akko arrives late and later the club enjoys the aircon in the club room. Hideki reveals he's only retrieved 20% of his stolen LA gear and Akko assumes he's looking for better gear angering Akane into ordering to repurchase the same ones. Yui asks the club about their expectations for the second semester, but their gaming discussion annoys her. She mentions the upcoming school cultural festival and despite Q's reluctance, the club must present its results. Q proposes Siege Warfare, a recent LAPVD update as their presentation and the winning group's emblem will be displayed. She also plans to use their school crest as their emblem. Walking home, Akko accepts she can't win in PvP but remains happy to walk home with Hideki daily. At home, the guild practices PvP in LA but Akko and Rujin hesitate to attack each other until Schwein urges them. Akko lands a hit which reflects on her, prompting Rujin to worry and Schwein to battle him. Akko buffs Rujin, and they immediately defeat Schwein with their combo. Apricot then duels Schwein but loses, battles Rujin and loses again and finally duels Akko. Akko nervously spams attacks and wins, leaving Apricot puzzled by her losses despite being the most powerful. Rujin, noting she's a magic user, tells Q she isn't fit for dueling against skilled PvP opponents, so she plans to create a new character for PvP. Though he suggests changing their presentation, Q insists they prepare for the next siege battle on Sunday. Approaching their current opponent's fort, Rujin assumes they're strong. Another guild attacks first, so they observe their enemy's strategies, but the guild instantly gets wiped out and stuns them. Still, Apricot orders their guild to attack, leaving them annihilated. With no penalties for losing, they try again and again lose, making Apricot suggest building a mechanism to break the fort's deadlock. However, she charges alone with her premium equipment, which is prohibited in siege battles, rendering her items useless. Nekohimi's guild then attacks the fort despite her order not to and unexpectedly takes over, but a large guild later defeats them. The four then tease Nekohimi for having admirers. The next day at school, Yui's class prepares for the festival when they hear Akko shriek. Hideki and Akane check on her, and she reveals her class proposed a maid cafe where the girls will serve guests. Assuming Akko knows about maids, her class puts her in charge and Akane and Hideki offer help. Later, Nanako unexpectedly enters the gaming club room. The guild meets Wallenstein, the LA server's top guild, and witnesses their power. Unable to form alliances near the fort, Wallenstein's leader, Bats, proposes a meeting there to form their alliance. They then discuss their roles in the strategy with Mizuki instructing Akko to heal Apricot's party while she handles the rest. Bats guides Set, and Schwein is told to charge and spam attacks. 
Apricot is only advised to tag along as bats assume their opponent is easy, making Manako and Akinine note the guild's rudeness. Still, Hideki urges against talking badly since they just met. Approaching the fort, Bat's orders Set and Akko to run by the walls, and Akko soon realizes their battle distractions. Schwein and Rujin charge at the entrance forces, becoming stunned when Bat's defeats a soldier easily. Wallenstein informs them all members will attack, allowing the club to observe how they don't need help as they can easily conquer the fort without them. Inside, Apricot places their alley cat's crystal on the throne, announcing their takeover while warning everyone to stay alert in case of attacks. However, Bats assures them Wallenstein will handle any threats, leaving the club unsatisfied with their victory. Hideki and Q decide to build defenses while waiting for Bats' return when suddenly, the alliance is cancelled and Bats swiftly appears, defeating them all except for Akko. He claims the throne and ultimately ends the siege, and Apricot realizes her mistake in trusting him as they bid farewell, leaving him confused by their calmness. Afterward, Akane feels their actions were wrong in claiming the fort, but she's more frustrated about being taken advantage of. Meanwhile, Akko apologizes to Hideki for being unable to do anything, but he assures her it wasn't her fault. Though she feels regretful of everything, he notices her improvement compared to when she was avoidant of conflicts, and they plan to give their all in the final siege to avoid regret and win. The next day, Hideki visits Q in the student council office where she instructs him to call her by her first name. Suddenly, she blushes intensely since he's the first non-family male who referred to her as Q. Hideki then discusses the siege battle, but Q assures she's prepared everything by purchasing powerful gear and buff potions. Returning to the club room, Hideki is shocked to find the girls in maid outfits, which they reveal are from Q's house. Q altered the outfits her assistants used and gave them to Akko, resolving her conflict. However, she hasn't made progress in other tasks, so Hideki apologizes and asks for help from Akko's classmates. Unexpectedly, everyone pitches in, prompting Hideki to reflect on the importance of asking for help. Later, the guild pleads for Nekohimi's admirer guild to form an alliance with them for the siege warfare, which they abruptly accept to get revenge for Nekohimi. They then plead the same with the Black Magician's guild, hoping to use them as a threat to other opponents since their guild is powerful. The Black Magician accepts, and the Alley Cats practice PvP in the arena with him tagging along. He compliments Apricot's expensive equipment, only to be stunned by how much she spent. Before the festival, students finish preparations, and Q announces the club's objective conquering and defending the fort until the siege ends. Hideki assumes the fort is empty, recalling Bat's preference for attacking over defending, and Q warns their biggest challenge will be Wallenstein's attack. Meeting Nekohimi's guild, Rujin learns Fiend is absent, leaving him as the only tank. As the siege begins, Emperor Sword, a guild they previously defeated, enters the fort first. Apricot orders Nanako to attack with their mechanism, and they launch a large assault on the walls. They struggle due to being sure on teammates, so Set mentions in all chat that the Black Magician is coming to help, making their opponents laugh in disbelief while giving Schwein an opening to defeat them. Apricot orders a deeper push, and they eventually reach the throne and place their crystal. As they need to defend the fort for 20 minutes, the forces charge toward enemies, and Apricot and Akko launch a gigantic magic combo attack to wipe them out. With 10 minutes left, Wallenstein finally arrives, prompting Apricot to order their strategy, with Wallenstein easily defeating their front forces. Schwein prepares for their surprise attack, but is noticed and thwarted by Bats, who defeats her group. Still, Schwein uses all of her potions to buy time before getting annihilated, earning Q's MVP praise. In the last two minutes, Rujin faces Wallenstein when Set's approach causes them to accidentally use their skills on her. With this, Nekohimi's guild attacks, defeating three Wallenstein members. Their tank distracts Rujin as Bats heads to the throne room, making Akane nervous. Q reassures her and faces Bats, stunning him by continuously shielding herself from his attacks through rapid keyboard clicking. Rujin's help fails when Wallenstein's tank knocks him down, but Akko intercepts the attack, allowing him time to recover and corner the tank for the remaining seconds. Apricot continues spamming her defense and is eventually victorious, leaving Bats stunned as the club celebrates their victory. The allied guilds cheer, and Bats mentions how Apricot drank refreshed potions costing double the cost of the castle they conquered. Rujin worries about how much she spent, but she reveals she only sold her extra premium items and would spend amounts just for her friends, making Bats giggle and like her before Wallenstein leaves. Afterward, Hideki recalls Q mentioning it was the second most beneficial spending she did and asks about the first most, which she reveals is her PC. Akko claims to have no regrets, but she becomes nervous about the festival. Later, Akane is in disbelief that she's conversing normally with Hideki before parting ways. Hideki then heads to Akko's class cafe where Akko runs out, prompting him to urge her back inside. She greets him sweetly and Hideki appreciates his wife. 
After enjoying the festival, Akko and Hideki clean up alone and Akko reveals she liked her school life because he was there along with the club. He commends her skills in being their cafe's head maid and offers any reward she wants, so Akko slowly approaches to kiss him. However, the club members suddenly arrive and sense the tension, making Hideki clarify that he only rewards something in LA, Akko insists it's the same, frustrating him into shouting that games and reality are separate.